So good afternoon and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Finos virtual meetup where I am joined. Um, so I am James McLeod, the Director of Community at Finos, um, and I'm joined today with um, David Watkins, Walks Lead Maintainer and, and Technical Director at Deutsche Bank, uh, Mark Guerrero, uh, Lead Business Analyst and Product Manager at Deutsche Bank, um, Cameron Salim, Senior Software Developer, Jessica Woodland-Scott, Technical Al Analyst, all from Deutsche Bank and all from the uh, Walks team. Um, and just to remind you that Deutsche Bank is also a Finos Platinum member, and they are here today to um, run us through introducing Walks, an open enterprise project. But before we get, before I hand the reins over to David, um, I would like to ask everybody to remain on mute for the duration of the uh, meetup this afternoon. And if you have any questions, please put them in the WebEx chat. Also this afternoon, we're going to be um, drawing um, two winners from people who have registered for this event. And each of those winners will be sent a Finos t-shirt. So if you haven't registered for the event, if this has been forwarded to you, go across to finos.org and register the event to be in with a chance of uh, winning a Finos t-shirt. And then remember to visit Finos on LinkedIn and on Twitter, where you can uh, follow us on both. Um, go over to finos.org to get involved and learn how to get involved with the Finos community um, and also uh, find how you can register for news and updates of, uh, of events and also our projects. Um, and if you are a developer or an engineer, please do visit us on github.com forward slash Finos where you can leverage and also start contributing into our projects, including Waltz. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand the reins over to David Watkins, um, Technical Director and Lead Ma Maintainer of Walt. Okay, thanks, James. And thanks, everyone, for uh, for coming to this presentation. Um, so, yeah, this presentation is going to be about Walt, uh, an open enterprise project. Uh, we're going to be discussing a bit about the history of Walt, what Walt is, uh, what Waltz is, uh, the uses that we've we uh, we've found for it in Deutsche Bank and elsewhere, uh, and then we'll also be talking a little bit about how to get involved, how to get started with Waltz, how to make contributions, etc. So, without further ado, let's talk. Uh, just introduce the team a little bit more. So, uh, Mark, do you want to quickly pop off mute and uh, say a few words about yourself and anything you've worked on that you particularly want to highlight? Yep, thank you, David. Uh, my name is Mark Rurio, uh, lead functional business analyst on the on the Waltz program within uh, within Deutsche Bank, based in Singapore. Um, I guess I've been in the team for four years uh, and had a variety of roles across the financial services. From a Waltz perspective, uh, I think the piece I'm probably most proud of has been working on the application uh, release controls and really uh, putting some teeth behind some of the some of the data completeness uh, and data quality that we have within the application. Okay. Okay, Cam. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so I'm Cameron Salim. I'm, um, I'm a developer. I have been for around 12 years um, focusing on UI and uh, backend development. Um, so my, my passion is in UI development, and I'm particularly proud of uh, the Waltz visualizations that display data and, and, and make it easy to consume. Uh, my recent work has been developing the open source software component build out in Waltz and visualizing. Um, uh, software usage uh, and dependencies and, and also vulnerabilities in Waltz. Okay, I'm, I'm Dave. Uh, I'm a solutions architect at Deutsche Bank. And I started the project a few years ago. Uh, on to Jessica. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a junior developer on the Waltz team. I joined Deutsche Bank back in July 2018. And I've been a member of Waltz since March last year. Uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of is the uh, favorites uh, feature that we've recently worked on um, and customizing the home page to make it more personal. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, so, quick background, uh, Waltz, uh, we, we kind of classify it as an enterprise information system. It's not really an enterprise architecture system. Uh, when you talk about enterprise architecture, people are thinking, you know, big diagrams, UML diagrams, or whatever, thinking about uh, frameworks such as TOGAF. Uh, Waltz is more about trying to bring in disparate sources of data and sh combine those and present a view of uh, what we tend to be called like the technology landscape within an organization. 
Uh, you'll see that in a minute when we go into the demos and talk a little bit more about the feature set. Uh, it's about six years old. It started as a pure open source project. So before I joined the bank, it was uh, started as an open source project. Um, so it's uh, OS, it's open source through and through. Uh, throughout its life cycle, or through the jump through the, um, most of those six years, it's had active development, uh, typically around three to four devs and one one or two business analysts. Uh, so it's, if you look at the GitHub uh, stats, uh, you'll see that it's been pretty much consistently worked on uh, for those six years. Uh, one of the things that we're very excited about is uh, earlier in the year, we started transitioning to Finos. Uh, so we went into one of their incubating projects. And we've recently, through the help of James and others in the Finos team, sort of graduated into a fully activated project, which we're very excited about. Um, Deutsche Bank is obviously a main consumer, main user of Waltz. However, we are seeing interest and there's act and there's usage in other areas. I uh, know NetWest Markets have come out and uh, they're publicly supporting it, been publicly doing commits. Uh, and there's other institutions which are beginning to uh, to evaluate Waltz. Um, hopefully, as we've uh, transitioned Waltz to Finos and uh, people can see uh, the commitment that Deutsche Bank is making to, to Waltz, uh, then this will help garner further uh, attention uh, in using Waltz. Okay, so where does Waltz fit in? Um, basically, Waltz is a kind of a reaction to some of the uh, perceived limitations of some of the uh, architecture tools that we have been using uh, previously. Um, so one of the things that we saw or we quite often see is that architecture tools kind of get used by architects and um, not many other people really have visibility of that sort of domain, uh, which leads to, you know, we get lots of incomplete data sets. You know, there'll be a program of work which goes and collects a whole bunch of data. It then starts going stale. It's only for part of the bank or part of the organization uh, or, you know, the methodology used to collect and uh, collate the data is pretty much ad hoc. So Walter's approach has been basically kind of to flip that around a little bit and say, well, actually, rather than it being a the architecture group's uh, function to populate this sort of repository of information, let's open the uh, let's open the the doors and get the data capture coming in from the users, from the developers within the organisation. It's kind of taking an open source approach in a way. We're taking like a collaborative, many eyes uh, model, where you know the more people who are feeding data in, uh, the more likely it is, the more pressure it is for it to be correct. And also unearths uh, some discrepancies. So if you've got a flow and someone says this flow exists, someone else says it doesn't exist. Uh, quite often there might be some toing and froing, but usually it leads to a better understanding of the organisation. The other thing that we're finding very powerful about Walt is it basically using it as a tool to promote standardization within the organization. You know, so we are actively promoting common taxonomies. So we're trying to describe processes in the same way, functions in the same way, and applying that across the bank. Um, looking forward, we hope to sort of uh, accelerate that as more people start using Waltz. They open the door to perhaps looking at sort of doing uh, cross uh, interbank uh, standardization, uh, which there has been some interest uh, talk to other banks in the past about uh, going down this avenue. Um, I'll do a demo of Waltz. Uh, I can remember how this bit. Okay, so Waltz. Um, so from the front page of Waltz, we can see basically we get a little, or we, we can see uh, get access to all of the applications. So we can search for applications by name. We can look at recently used ones. Uh, we've got this thing here, the, uh, the recently updated application, so you can keep on top of your portfolio, uh, which is the thing that Jess mentioned. She was instrumental in building this out. Um, so we look at a very quickly at an application. Uh, this is just using sample data set, hence all the names are animals and things. We can see we've got basic information about an application, who owns it in terms of the organization. And we have a whole bunch of different facets of data that we capture things around uh, bookmarks, uh, change initiatives that it's linked to, uh, data flows, you can have diagrams uh, showing how the data is flowing to the system. We have statistics, we have all the people who work on the thing, what kind of features 
from those ta standardized taxonomies I mentioned are being used. Uh, Mark's going to talk a little bit more about how those features are used to derive sort of business value in a minute. Uh, I wanted to touch on one of the, the other features, which is surveys. Uh, so quite often we are using Waltz to go out and do uh, sort of fire drills or to do sort of systematic data capture. And we can say, OK, fire out a survey, which you can configure and define yourself and send it out to all applications which exhibit the following characteristics. So send it to all applications which belong to this part of the bank, which are involved in settlements. And you can then send out a more detailed um, questionnaire to, to, to solicit data which isn't, doesn't fit within the Waltz data model. Um, with that, I mean, that's a very, very quick handover. Uh, there's lots of documentation and things to look at, but I'm going to hand over to Mark very quickly, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the details of Waltz. Mark, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, thanks very much. Perfect. Okay, yeah, so I guess the, the, the one, of, one of the easy things within Deutsche Bank, obviously, has been um, we've been adopted for over four years now. Uh, we've currently got over 15,000 users across the bank. Um, and this sort of translates to around 2,500 um, user-driven um, data changes. Um, one, of the, one of the things, just echoing what David said earlier, is with, the, with people being able to see the information and being able to actually look at it and, and really get under the skin of it, it, it motivates people to actually look at it rather than it's being hidden away with a couple of people that have got access to it. So it really does help drive adoption. Um, so that, that definitely helps. The next please, Dave. Okay, so I guess one of, one of the key things within Waltz has been the, uh, around, it's been the flows and the lineage piece, which I'll demonstrate in a second. Um, this really helps us to be able to look at the and look at and advise around the regulatory and the audit pieces um, that we have. Obviously, being able to show um, the regulators or be able to show um, some people with an audit where the data has come, where it's gone. Um, this is obviously you know, really helpful, especially if we look at um, some of the regulation we have across across the industry. If we were to look at things such as DFS 504, BCBS 239, um, the things like GDPR, all those kind of things where the regulators are looking for lineage and look and understand what's happening in the data, how the application's involved in that kind of piece, so that can be used around around that piece. Um, I guess, as I said earlier, so the the, uh, the release level controls, again, this really gives us more of a more of a view and a control around what's happening across our architecture estate. So historically, you know, many organizations really struggled to you know, look at the data and look at what's actually moving across their estate. By having data standards and looking at them across, um, across an application level, this again gives us Gives us another piece to actually really uh, understand what's happening and have some faith uh, in, in the, what's been documented from, by, the, by the architects and by the application owners. And so, um, one, one thing I think David just touched on, which I'll, I will in a moment. So, one thing we within the with having our enterprise wide taxonomies um, and standardized um, enterprise functional taxonomies gives us the ability to uh, look at uh, app rationalization. So, again, we can look at this for things like roadmaps. And again, it gives us that view to, you know, for things like the cost saving initiatives to understand where there's duplication and just understand and, and ask questions. Um, it just provides that lens, which obviously provides senior management a lot of uh, interesting conversations. And so it can really drive those kind of pieces. Okay. So as David, David mentioned earlier, um, survey, surveys really are something that can be used for ad hoc sort of fire drills that we can have across the organization. But can also be used to support things like the records management, um, like legal holds, and um, especially things like architecture governance to understand how projects and programs aligned uh, by architects and program directors, that kind of thing. Uh, and obviously, Waltz can help within that. And again, we could use Waltz to look at things like cloud migration to understand you know, what, what the plan is and, and uh, you know, how we wanted to support that and understand whether people could be ready or not. Um, that's some, some of the other things that we can do within surveys. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the documenting the roadmaps, looking at your, your sort of business functions and sort of looking at from an application lens and saying, how, how is this going to roll off in the future? How do we see how do we see our estates moving? Um, now, I will try again to see if I can uh, share my screen and I'll run through a very quick demo. And um, just give me two seconds. OK, so will this works this time. Okay, David, can you see the screen? Yeah, I've got the same. Okay, okay, uh, worked a little bit better. So, um, as, as I was showing, this is your, your typical view of an application. A couple of things I wanted to call out is we have the functionality to be able to look at attestations. And again, what this can help show us is somebody has gone in and tested that the, the logical flows, so the point to point flows are correct. 
and obviously you can see you know, when it was done and, and who did it and those kind of pieces. Um, I'll talk again around the data flows. Again, one of the really uh, interesting pieces, and pieces that excite all the people across uh, across the world's uh, user base is being able to look very easily around what application is moving across the estate, where it's going to, and the sort of information that's moving. Um, again, this gives us that, that transparency that um, regulators and audits uh, like rather than hidden away in Excel spreadsheets or PowerPoints or Access databases, it, it's very clean um, and gives a clean representation to, to show you what's moving across. Um, and again, especially when you can then relate to applications to, to things like your business functions to say, you know, what, what are your applications doing? Uh, maybe your products. And again, in this case, the regulation. Um, and the one, one great thing that Waltz does, uh, which probably isn't called out enough, is obviously all of this information is really useful on an application by application basis. But when you start rolling it into different levels of the organization or by different levels of management, obviously it becomes a far more powerful tool. Okay. Uh, on that note, Cameron, I'll move across to you. Thank you, Mark. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm just going to talk briefly about the uh, challenges that we've faced um, uh, developing the uh, open source software within a bank. Um, and principally, one of the, the most difficult things is pushing the actual code out of, of the internal network. Um, and I'll just share my screen briefly. Um, so obviously as as you know there's the the the, the finos master we've got the uh Richard bank uh repo as well uh we don't actually actively commit to this because uh all of our day-to-day -day development is done um on uh, on an internal repository um and this goes through a four eyes review process as well as a data leakage check before it goes out to the to the public uh repository um and, and in this way we kind of manage our risk and, and ensure that uh, corporate security, security concerns are kind of allayed. Um, but when these when these branches or our code changes make it out, they they appear as branches uh, within our repo, and then through the normal process, you create a pull request for the FinOps master, and and that will get reviewed as, as the normal. Um, so that's that's how you essentially get started, and it's, it, we found is the easiest way to to start committing. Um, Waltz being a uh, a tool it, it requires a lot of data to kind of make the best of it, um, centering around uh, people, organizational units, applications, um, applications, and um, uh, sorry, excuse me. Um, but in, in order to kind of populate that data, that we found the most effective way is through an ETL tool. Um, and, and populate that directly into the database. Uh, whilst they are editing screens in Waltz, these are usually ad hoc things like bookmarks and data flows, but never intended for bulk uh, insertion. Uh, so we actually developed a, uh, our own uh, scheduling uh, framework, which runs on a nightly basis built on ports. And this um, is built on uh, custom Java, Java code, which allows us to scan data from various disparate sources uh, massage it into the, into the format that Waltz needs and then push directly into the database. And this has worked really, really well for us because we, we source data from other databases, uh, web services, uh, CSV files, anything really that you can access through the Java code. Um, and the most common data sets that you, you typically need to get started are application data, organizational units, people, um, and then logical flows and physical flows are, are, are kind of direct um, follow on from those. Um, the other thing that we have uh, typically have difficulty with in in dealing with is, is dealing with bespoke requirements that you you find inside of a in, uh, an enterprise, and then also trying to fit those for the general use case that Waltz uh, that Waltz. Um, Cater for because being an open source product, and uh, some of these things can be kind of standardised through terminology and having a standardised workflow, standardised roles, uh, to to kind of um, provide a common theme. Um, in other cases, we've got these taxonomies that uh, uh, Mark was showing, where where you can actually soft code a lot of the the hierarchy you, that we have, and then provide ratings upon them. Um, we also have cases where we need uh, to present data from Waltz in in slightly diff uh, different ways, reporting uh, reporting to different 
uh, parts of the business or even to uh, regulators. And in that case, the database is available to query um, and use BI tools like Tableau or, or ClickView to, to then combine that Volsa database with other data, pieces of data to, to find grand game reporting and, 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 um, and, and present the data in interesting ways. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Jess, who will talk more about how, how you can get started with Waltz from a coding perspective. Thanks, Ken. So, Dave is actually going to be my mouse clicker today. So, Dave, if you could load up the main GitHub page, that would be great. But I thought today I could spend some time talking about how to get involved and how to contribute towards Waltz. So you can see here on our overview of the project, we have a variety of different modules, which some of which represent sort of a layer of arch architecture. So we have, for example, Waltz Web, which contains all our endpoints, uh, or Waltz Data, which has all our down methods. And this sort of breakup of the project makes it really easy to navigate around and know where you're looking for. Also, from someone who's relatively new to the team, what I found particularly useful was the Waltz Common folder. So this contains a lot of our reusable code, so utilities methods. So, for example, if we wanted to work with sets, we can go in here, find our set utilities class, and there's a lot of already pre-written code there, which makes it more standard across the whole project, and it's just really helpful if there's something you want to look for. Um, another thing or another feature of Waltz and how we work is our ability to stick to naming conventions, and this makes it also really easy to find what we're looking for. For example, if we wanted to find uh, the application overview, if Dave could just search for a file, it is as simple as that application view or application overview, depending on which component you want to look for. And again, a lot of our main views have dynamic sections beneath. Um, these can be shared across different pages, but if we want to search for a specific section, we just go to the dynamic section definition file. Um, and here we'll see a breakdown of all of these, um, the individual IDs for each one and the name of the file. Uh, that we can search for. For example, if we look at, take the top one, the app section, we can see that has an ID of one, and you would simply search the file app section. So it's very consistent across the code base. If we could just go back to the main overview of Waltz again, Dave, we can also see a folder for our documentation. We call it docs. And inside this, you'll have an overview of all our features. You'll have an overview of some of our designs and some of our development practices. So this is uh, really helpful. So not only by contributing code or reviewing pull requests, you can also help Waltz and contribute towards Waltz by uh, giving feedback on our designs or feedback on our existing features. So if we just look, take a look at some of these, uh, perhaps in the design section, you can see some of the latest changes we've implemented, for example, on the home page, and you can see some sort of mock-ups. Um, so it's a really great way to sort of get a feel for what's coming and give us some feedback on those features. We could also uh, look into features in more detail when we get around to thinking about development, we tend to create an issue. So if you can go into the development folder inside of Docs, Dave, we will see our issue management readme. Um, and this gives a description of how we tend to use issues through GitHub to help our development practice. So each issue when it's created uh, is assigned to a milestone and for each release we have an individual milestone and then uh, in the current release we'll have three milestones for work that is uh, to do, work is that work in progress and work is that already done. And we also utilize the label features. So if you're new and want to get involved in Walt, quite often we'd look for a label which is a small change or a good first issue uh, because these tend to be straightforward, easy to implement changes. Um, whereas if you're looking for something to sort of what's coming next in Waltz, you might want to look for something that's noteworthy. These tend to be issues we want to flag as something that other people might want to know about a big change to the code there. Perfect. So if we just take a look at the individual issues, and David, you could sort by the number of comments on those. We can see a really great example of how we've had feedback from end user and implemented that in the code. If we go by most commented, the top one there should be the Docker sample install of Waltz. We can see here someone called Albert Lee has come back with some uh, enhancements to this issue, and then uh, other members of the team have gone through, uh, responded to these changes, and then very helpfully, Dave, at the end of this, has created a screencast, um, which we made av available to talk through the latest feature. So I'm just going to show you how we can find these screencasts. Um, they're relatively new, so we've only got a few at the moment. But Dave, if you go back to code, and then to waltz.finos.org, and then to the blog tab, 
you'll see a screencast of some of the latest features, also things about like how to get started um, as well. So that's really helpful for people just looking at the project for the first time. That's kind of the main things I wanted to touch on today, but it might also be worth mentioning a few of the uh, pieces of future functionality that's coming up. So one of the things we're looking to, into at the moment is things called conditional surveys. So I know Dave touched on surveys earlier. At the moment, it's a simple list of questions, some of which are mandatory. And hopefully in the next few releases, we're looking to make this a lot more tailored, a lot more flexible, by introducing some predicates to questions which describe whether or not they should be shown, either based on answers to previous questions in the survey or uh, features of your application itself, for example, if it's a tiling. Um, so I just want to open that up to the rest of the team if there's anything else they want to talk about um, in future features or hand back to her on the next segment. I think there's one of the... Thanks, Jess. Just just wanted to quickly mention some of the uh, sort of the themes for the future. Um, so as Jess mentioned, you know, one of the things that we've found has been very successful is the surveys. Um, but also we, we are increasingly moving uh, future state uh, views of organisations. So we're taking all of the data that Waltz has uh, currently or historically it's been very much around uh, current state. So how does the technology landscape look right now? Uh, but we've been adding in more and more future state stuff. So we've been adding in roadmap support uh, and you know architectural governance, showing how flows will change over time, what apps are being commissioned, which ones are going to be decommissioned, uh, etc. Uh, that's something that's going to undergo development. We've got basically funding and plans uh, through to next year sometime to keep building those sorts of features out. Um, so there's going to be a lot of work in that other area. Plus, we're also just cons consistently reviewing, you know, ease of use, uh, and also just the comprehension of the data. It's uh, quite a large co uh, body of data that people uh, uh, can sift through. So we're always looking at where to present things better. I think Cam mentioned at the beginning. You know, we are very interested in you know looking at visualizations to help people stay on top of. Uh, the data set in Waltz and how it's changing. Oh, that's my timer. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much everything I think we wanted to cover from a presentation point of view. Yeah. Uh, James, I think we're ready to move into the Q&A. Of... Absolutely. So thank you for setting a timer. Um, I think you better go and check the cake that's in the oven. Um, I hope it's not burning. <laughs> um, okay, so before we actually go to the Q&A, um, I'd like to actually uh, just reveal the winners of the Finos t-shirts, as I said at the beginning um, of the meetup. So I'm pleased to announce that the first t-shirt winner is Adam Jones um, from CodeThink, and the second t-shirt winner is James Bennett from Deloitte. So the Finos team will be in contact with you for your um, shipping details. Thank you very much. Um, so for the people who are on the call, um, for, no problem, no problem whatsoever. Um, feel free to put your questions um, in the in the WebEx chat. Um, but in the meantime, I do have a question from Kevin. Um, so thank you, Kevin, for asking this about 15 minutes ago. Um, and the, the question is, so this is kind of like an open source solution stroke alternative to what Calibra is doing. So. David, I don't know if you're able to pick up on that, whether there's any, you know, proprietary alternatives or proprietary software that Waltz is actually providing with functionality as an alternative. Okay, yeah. So uh, Calibra is actually something we use extensively in the bank as well. Uh, so Calibra we use uh, quite often for uh, doing some of the more sort of formal taxonomy management, which we then import into Waltz. Um, so quite often things like the data taxonomy. Uh, so each of the flows, we didn't really show it in the demo, but the flows can be marked, uh, can be tagged with the type of data that they contain. You know, is it risk data? Is it position data, et cetera? Um, so that actual registry of data types is held by um, Calibra. It also does things such as, you know, uh, storing um, a register of authoritative sources. So who should be supplying that data? Waltz then consumes that, and there's sort of authority statements within Waltz. Um, so you can then grade those data flows and say, well, this flow is authoritative because it's getting settlement data from a, a proper settlement system, whereas this one is not authoritative because it's getting it from some other system. 
Um, so we do sit beside Calibra. Uh, there is a little overlap uh, in terms of like the um, uh, some of the feature set in terms of the taxonomy management, etc. But we found that really Calibra is uh, kind of more of a specialist tool. Uh, and Waltz is niche is usually when it comes to socializing that data out to the wider enterprise and also combining it with other data sets. So we've got a bit more flexibility uh, with how we go about visualizing things, which is some of the stuff that we've had problems uh, with Calibra. Brilliant. Absolutely. Kevin says thank you in chat. So thank you, Kevin, for answering that. And thank you, David, for, um, for answering. Um, we have another question from Richard. Um, he's just um, uh, text. Can you share this internally with your company and externally with suppliers, service providers, etc., for shared systems? This seems focused on internal staff at the moment. Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, the the date the security model is relatively open, so I think there probably may be some issues with allowing uh, uh, third parties direct access into a Waltz install. Uh, we are consistently, well, we are uh, in more and more security controls uh, as time goes by. Um, so that's something that may change, but at the moment it is predominantly inward looking. Although we do track, um, for instance, on physical flows, on the flow information, we do track flows obviously going out uh, to third parties, you know, so we've got uh, either actors, which are things like uh, chief risk officers, or we have actors which are external institutions, uh, such as the Bank of England. Um, but yes, um, I think we'd have to discuss a bit more about the use case of uh, airing waltz no with uh, external parties. So, Richard, um, feel free to raise an issue um, on the Waltz project in GitHub, and maybe we can continue the conversation there. That's a good idea. Um, so we have two more questions, and we're, we're kind of running out of time. So we'll um, maybe answer these two just very quick. So uh, the first is from Lee. Uh, what is the state of user documentation, i.e. user manual? How do we get started configuring it, getting data into a new instance? Okay, that's something that is, uh, I think common with a lot of open source projects is is missing, or not missing, but uh, is um, needs extra attention. Uh, we have a fair bit of documentation around the feature set. What we don't really have at the moment is a really smooth getting started guide. There are some on the uh, screencasts, which is technology getting started, you know, how to get it up and running. Uh, but we do need to provide some more information about, you know, getting the data sets in, some of the stuff that Cam was mentioning about, you know, writing the, uh, you know, bringing in uh, data sets around organizational units, etc. Uh, we do have some documentation within Deutsche Bank uh, that's currently being evaluated and being checked for IP uh, issues, um, hoping that those will form the, the sort of the bedrock of the documentation system in the very near future. That's awesome. And um, if you are somebody who would like to get involved in um, helping the team with documentation, um, open source isn't just for developers. So if you're somebody who likes to write documentation, um, feel free to get involved with the team and maybe help out. Um, and this is um, from James. So our final question. Thanks for the presentation, team. What kind of challenges did you face with getting users at Deutsche Bank to use Waltz? Presumably, this supersedes existing technology catalogs stroke taxonomy, taxonomy repositories. Um, yes. I mean, Waltz, we kind of grew initially sort of organically. You know, it grew out of uh, we work in the group architecture team. Um, we sort of started it almost for ourselves. And then we started, people started using it, and it's grown organically that way. Uh, getting people on board hasn't been too much of a challenge unless we're running up against a, a kind of an incumbent in that sort of area. Um, so there's certain areas of the bank which might use tools such as uh, planning IT. They tend to be pockets uh, within the bank. Um, for those, we've been looking at you know doing enhanced integration and then talking longer term about whether or not it's viable for them to move onto Waltz uh, full scale. Uh, with regards to taxonomy management, there's not an awful lot out there in use in the bank, which is um, dealing with that, um, apart from Calibra, which said we're already integrating with, and around things like flows, then we're already doing some work with uh, tools like Solidatus, 
Uh, so Solidatus perhaps feeds off Waltz, while Waltz will provide kind of the macro view or the high level view of flows in the bank. And then Solidatus will go in and perhaps provide the, the real low level detail view. Um, and that's sort of active on, uh, development. And we'll be working on that in the coming months. That's brilliant. So with that, I'd like to draw this virtual meetup to a close and say thank you to everybody who's attended today. Um, so uh, please feel free to go to finos.org uh, where you'll be able to see up and coming events um, and also um, other you know, bigger events like um, the Open Source Strategy Forum and you know, other um, online virtual conferences that um, Finos are actually creating. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the Waltz team. So thank you, David, Mark, Cameron, and Jessica for uh, being here today. That was a superb session. So thank you to you all. Um, and thank you to everybody for being here. Um, have a great day.